Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Draw With T. So today is going to be a little bit different. Um, here I am basically doing some layout stuff for some zines. Now, if you guys don't know what a zine is, it's kind of like a magazine that you can make on your own. You can distribute it however you like. Uh, you might just make a few for some friends. Um, that that little that little bit there was my comic. Um, or or you might uh, might go to a zine show, or you might just sell it. It's basically like a punk magazine. It's something you make on your own. Um, it doesn't get published through anybody. Um, and you decide what goes in it. So a zine can basically be anything. Um, in the same way you can self-publish a book, um, that's basically what a zine is. It's like a self-published magazine. You you decide how many you make, if you're going to make them often, if it's going to be like a monthly feature or, or what have you. Um, they're traditionally pretty much uh, low quality made, uh, just given the nature of them. Um, a lot of people say, you know, oh, I'm going to get my zine printed at Kinko's. Well, I don't know where any Kinko's are around in, here in Canada. Maybe, maybe they are around here, but I, I don't know where there, where there are any. But, uh, you know, here we would, would go to Staples. Um, here, we're about to switch over, but this is just me figuring out some pagination stuff uh, and some layout stuff because um, the zine that I am paginating and working on today is sort of a combination of uh, two old school projects that... Uh, that I worked on back in my third year. And um, this was basically the very, very start of Kalismir. So it's, um, it's a special comic, special two projects. It's um, a storyboard and a comic, and together they, they tell a story. Um, the storyboard was the first project, and it was the our first introduction to storyboarding. Um, that project really wasn't an accurate portrayal of what storyboarding is. But I, I got, I, I had some fun, and um, the end result was was pretty fun. Here you can see me uh, placing in some comic book pages. Um, those had previ previously been put in InDesign, so I was just kind of hoping to port the files over. And um, I don't know if I captured it here or not, but I don't think it went very well, so I had to do a little bit of a workaround. Here I'm placing the storyboard um, panels, and I don't know why it wasn't quite working but uh, there you go now now it's in action so the first project was a storyboard and I basically had had this idea at the time I just I literally had a dream about a f kooky comical female knight who went off to rescue a princess and the princess was real sweet on her and and the whole comedy kind of ensued with uh, the princess hitting on the knight and the knight wondering if the princess knew she was a girl or something like that. The original dream was a little bit loosey-goosey as actual dreams are. I woke up and uh, it was actually a, a good story, so I wrote it down in my um, story idea book, which I call the Black Book, because it is always a black book. Um, and it was just one of those weird ideas that actually stuck with me, which is surprising, because at the time I was kind of going through that phase where if I was writing fantasy, it had to be um, this sort of complicated thing. And that wasn't helped by the fact that when I was going to art school, they definitely rewarded things that they had just never seen before. So it kind of, um, I would say it almost wouldn't matter if anybody in the actual industry would like the product. So long as the teacher had never seen whatever it was you'd created before, you were golden and you were encouraged to uh, move on with that. So when I decided to work on something that was basically um, a funny take on the classic trope of the knight rescuing the princess from the dragon, it didn't get the best responses from some of my teachers. I had a really good teacher who supported me and without him I don't know if I would have pursued this project long enough for it to have become Kalismir. Um so I was glad for him but uh, but it, the story stuck with me and that was strange because at the time I was definitely in that phase of wanting to tell these complicated deep things um, and you know basically get my I always got myself in these situations where I couldn't explain the story because it required so much explanation of some other stuff, of what the races were and why things meant anything, because I went just so deep in, in the uniqueness that it was, it was kind of pointless. Um, 
But I, this idea didn't leave me, so I needed a break from a project that was a dead end, uh, a similar project like like I had just kind of mentioned, over the top in its attempt to be original and very heady and trying to be something, but it, it didn't really have a plot. It, it focused around a single character um, that was quite a plotless character. Um, so I wanted a little break, and having like a two or three week storyboard project, you know, I needed something with a strong story, and this had a strong story, and already um, I was talking to my friends about it, and they really liked it. And when the fact they really liked it um, made me like it more. So, uh, so I put some time into actually refining the story and making it sort of this story about, um, you know, these, this group of misfits. Um, you know, the girl who wants to be a knight, um, but isn't allowed. The sassy princess locked in a tower. Um, you know, the, the dragon that's actually, um, a wooby, if that's still a term we use. Uh, he's a pacifist and a vegetarian, and he doesn't want to hurt anybody. He just wants to read his books. Um, and how they all come together to basically do the reverse of what you expect and go, go oust the evil king. What was I talking about? I kind of forgot. Oh well, it doesn't ma doesn't quite matter. I think I was talking about uh, how I was telling my friends about this story and how it sort of evolved. Uh, one of the points of evolution was that uh, Yuzette and Tristan, Tristan being the knight, Yuzette the princess, I decided they knew each other from childhood, and that that added a uh, an extra element of interest. Um, also, a lot of people were saying that the story was like Shrek, which annoyed me at the time. Um, they're kind of right, I guess. But I feel like anything that's parody always gets compared to Shrek. Like any fantasy parody, if you're unless you know you're you're parodying something else, um, you know if you just have a knight, an unlikely knight, a princess, and a dragon, it's going to get compared to Shrek, uh, just because that's you know the first thing that kind of everybody knows for for being this sort of goofy take on this classic trope. Um, so I wanted it to be a bit different. So I I didn't want the whole. Fiona and, and Shrek making the journey and falling in love. I wanted there to be some connection between the characters um, previous to them finding each other again. And um, I just kind of liked that more because uh, it, it saves most of the journey from just being them getting to know each other because later on in Kalismir, things are, are very complicated up front. And, uh, you know, it doesn't, doesn't get any any less complicated as the story goes on. So having the characters know each other and seeing them reconnect and learn what's changed about each other from, you know, five years ago when they were 16 uh, versus being 21 is, uh, I think, an interesting angle. And I, I don't know if it's been explored a lot. Maybe it has been, but I mean, frankly, you can do, you can basically do any anything lesbian and it'll be unique. Like, it probably hasn't been done before, especially when you add fantasy and comedy. These are just... I've never seen anything mainstream that's, like, 100% wholly lesbian. Or, you know, like, wholly feminine queer, let's say. Um, also fantasy. Also comedy. Um, y you might get two out of three, you might get one out of three. It tends to be the common thing. But, uh, but never all, all three. So anyways, the storyboard project was basically me taking a little break from, uh, from this serious project I did. And um, that's when I discovered I have a talent for storyboards um, because we had to present them. And we had to present them as charismatically as storyboard presenters do or, or did. I'm, I'm not sure if they, they still kind of do, but we had to stand up in front of the class and kind of act it out. So I actually uh, practiced the script for that, and mine, my presentation was so on point. Uh, there were two classrooms running the class simultaneously, run by two teachers, so um, our whole group was divided into two classes, and my friends in the other class told me after after class they had they were laughing then they said tegan we we all heard you um shout chess because that just ha you just happened to coincide um that moment with a moment of silence in somebody else's presentation and we all laughed because we all knew exactly what had happened and what was going to happen in the storyboard and that that made me smile um, so that was kind of the start of my passion for that. And then the next project was a comic book project. 
which was uh, kind of what I wanted to do up until that point in college. So I kind of just, you know, joked about, I'll just continue the story in the comic. And everybody I said that to was like, you should. And they were serious. And they're like, I need to see what happens next. I need to see what happens, you know, with, uh, with Tristan and the dragon. Um, so that's what I did. And it was, yeah, it was, it was a good, fun time. Looking back, I find the art old. I find the story tropish and, you know, unrefined. But it's, it's five years old, roughly, I believe. So it's, that's understandable. Um, but I recently did a dramatic reading of all of these on TikTok. And it got a very positive response. People were actually asking me where they could buy this. And at the time, I was so busy with Halloween and Christmas that I just didn't have time to create any sort of document. So when my friend uh, came to me and said, hey, you want to participate in this zine this zine thing? I'm like, yeah, you know, and I was like, oh, crap. What ideas, what kind of zines should I make? And then I instantly thought back. My very first idea was, why don't I actually put together a physical version of that early story of quote-unquote knight and princess because that's what I called it at the time and so that's what I've been doing here and you've been watching that as I've been telling you the story <laughs> so I hope you guys kind of have enjoyed that little story I'm trying something a bit new with these episodes uh, in the most recent episodes I've been trying not to talk too much um, about stuff outside of what I've been doing in the episodes, and I, I haven't really been having a fun time. So, uh, I'm gonna try doing the opposite, actually. Um, um, if it's not important for me to talk about what's happening, I'm going to just kind of go off on things of interest, or stories, or th other things that sort of relate, or maybe they don't relate, and, uh, we'll, we'll see where that goes, and maybe that'll be, maybe this will sort of evolve into a, a bit more of a vlog show, or, or a, one of those um, shows where they sort of talk about topics that don't really relate to what's being drawn. Um, I've seen some people um, talk about like whether you should go to art college or not while just random artwork that they're drawing is happening in the background. So who knows? That uh, that could be a thing. Um, hope you've enjoyed this. Hope you didn't weren't upset that I wasn't explaining what I was doing. To be honest, I don't know if I could because while I can work in design, it's kind of a weird sort of magic. And I have a rudimentary understanding of it at, at best, I say. Well, a little bit more than rudimentary, but uh, not as fluent as Photoshop. Um, so I can only explain so much. Anyways, guys, we're getting really close to the end here. Um, so thank you for watching. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe if you, uh, if you haven't already. And I do hope to see you guys in the next episode. Um, thanks for tuning in again because uh, some of you will be watching this after um, or ha you'll have waited to watch this episode because I did take a little break. Um, those of you who are new, you get you don't really have to experience that break. So, you know, you're just continuing on from the last episode. So, yeah, have a good one, guys.